Hello, my name is Raido Boost, and in this video I will show a workflow how you can get leader data into your Civil 3D drawing or project. We can think about leader data as points or point files. This point file represents some area. Currently, in my example, I have about 500,000 point values, and those 500,000 points represent one square kilometer. Quite often, I don't need so many points to create a existing ground surface. That's why I want to filter my data based on some specific value or parameter. Of course, I can use Microsoft Excel workflow or similar workflow, but I can do it also in Civil 3 using survey queries. So that's what we are doing in this video. We use that raw data and then using Civil 3D tools we filter out some specific data that is important for us and based on that filtered data we create a surface. In this file that originally comes from Estonian land board includes columns like classification, it's the first column, next one is easting, then comes northing, point elevation, intensity and the last one is echo or reflection. As you see it's a text value. So let's move now to Civil 3D and let's have a look how to bring in that data into survey database and how to make some filtering inside Civil 3D. So I minimize those windows and open up my Civil 3D. As you see I have created a new drawing and it's an empty drawing. To be able to filter based on some specific column and if I know that this column is not not available in my Civil 3D already, I should create those property values. In that way, I can easily map those new properties with imported data columns. To do that, I go to my tool space and settings tab. Then I look for point node and in here I have user-defined property classifications. Of course, in later projects, you may already have those classifications defined. It's always a good idea to include those into your template. But at the moment, I have to create those. I open up a user-defined node and then do a right-click and create a new one. I use some classification name that indicates perhaps some company name from where the data is coming or maybe some specific project-based workflow. I use a company from where this data is coming. In that way, I can easily understand later on what property values are usable for different kinds of definitions. I click OK and now I will add some properties under this name. I do a right click, I pick new and give some name. For example, first one is leader classification and also I include LB as noting land board. In that way I easily can select it because I know that this one belongs to that. I also have to select a property field type. It will be integer in this case and all others are at default values. OK. I create another one, right click and new and this time I will use intensity and also LB. This is also an integer and I will leave default values down below. OK. And one more, right click and new and this time it will be echo or reflection and again LB. Of course I can also add some description that enhance my possibilities even more to make it as descriptive as possible. This echo value, as I showed you earlier, is string or text-based value. That's why I use string here. And also, OK, I have three values now defined for my specific leader database. Once again, I can include those definitions into my template file and later on or in another project they will be already available. Perhaps now it's going to be more interesting because I start to do something with database and I move on my toolspace palette onto tab survey. First I need to indicate where my database is will be. So I do a right click on survey database and pick set working folder. Then I navigate in my computer or server to the folder where are my databases or to the folder to where I want to create one. If I already have some databases in that particular folder I will see a list of those. But at the moment I don't. That's why I do a right click again and create a new local survey database. New left click. I give some name for example in my case again land board and OK. Once I create a new database it will be automatically opened but I can quickly close this survey database and 
do another one or open some other database or open again this same database. If my database is open, its name will be in bold and it means that I can continue working with this specific database. Of course, the next step will be that I want to import my raw data, import events. And please remember that when importing your raw data into survey database, it is going to that database. It's not coming to your drawing yet. And that's one of the good things because we want to do some filtering or queries before we import those points into our drawing. So I right click import events and import survey data. In here I have import survey data wizard. Quite important is to check some general database settings. I click edit survey database settings. In here, if I haven't changed it, I need to change, in my case, distance as a meter, because my data, easting and nothing values are in meters. I may want to change also other values, but at the moment, those are not important. I click OK. I click Next, and in here, I now start to select my raw data files. I can select as many files as I want, because in larger projects, those measurements or point data may come from different files and I can add up those files quite easily into this area. Please remember that you can see quite similar dialogue when you're just importing your point file into your drawing. In this case, we are importing our data to survey database to be able to do some magic before importing to drawing. I click on plus sign and then I pick that raw data file that I showed you earlier. As you see, it's in XYZ format, but I can select also more files. One file selected and open. Once it is opened, it will show you a green check mark if you have some kind of valid file format to be able to import into survey database. If you know that your data file is in some specific format and you need to change that format, you do that by clicking on this little button, manage formats. We also need to do it because at the moment I don't have that specific format defined. But again, in later projects, you may already have it. So manage formats. Then I click a new button. I pick user point file. OK. And now I have a dialog point file format. I give some name for format name. I use file extension as a XYZ. And also I know that my data is delimited by tab. So I don't include anything but just selecting delimited by. I also want to do some filtering in that file when importing into my database. For example, I use every tens of points because to create my existing ground surface, those 500,000 points are a little bit too much. And perhaps also for this example, it will be also easier to follow. Please remember that this filtering doesn't account, for example, classification, but it will simply pick every tenth row. Now the more interesting part comes in here. Here you can select your columns, how your columns are ordered in your row file. So I start from first column, left click, and then I select first leader classification LB. OK, next one will be easting. So those are already here and I can use default column names. Third one will be nothing. Then comes point elevation. The fifth one will be scrolling down and intensity LB and the last one will be echo LB. Okay, so those are my columns. Those can be reordered quite easily. You just grab and uh, move to another place. I now click OK and I have now new format T5 point file formats and I have here land board. I dismiss this dialog and now I will ensure that this land board is also selected in this area. Now I can see a preview of my raw data file and as you can see it will use the same column names as we define in this land board definition. If everything looks correct I click next. I don't want to create survey network so I click next again. Here I can do some fine tunings but uh, as I don't have for example figure objects or I don't want to create those I check that those are at no value and then I click finish. It will start to import my points 
And as you can see from the right hand corner, approximately 50,000 points will come in into my survey database. And that's because I selected every tenth point. Once my input is finished, I can see a file name on the input events. And I can also click on that node and pick a survey points node. In here, I can see my preview of that data that I just imported. I can see my easting, nosing, and elevation values. And also when scrolling to the right, I can see a classification, a density, and also echo value. Those are used at later step when we want to create a survey query. And our next step will be to create a survey query. That's why we actually started this uh, example. We want to show how you can import your data into survey database and do some specific tunings before you create a terrain surface. In this example, our query will be based on leader classification. As you see, our database has different classification values, 2, 5, 6, 8, 1 also. But from those values, actually only 2 and 8 represents surface points and we want to create our terrain surface based on those values 2 and 8. So we go to our survey queries node and then right click and pick a new. Survey query builder will be opened and I can then create a new survey and I will give some meaning. For example, surface points class 2 and Eight, meaning that I do a filtered by either classification equals two and eight. So something meaningful. Next step, we'll do add those queries also down below. So I concentrate on points node. As you see, we also have a figures node and some general default sort order in editor. I first need to select a property so I can easily pick a all or a none and then I can click a next one, leader classification. So it all started from here. Basically, I created a new user property value that can be now used also in this dialog. Then I can pick a operator is equal to and for example, two. I also want to add those rows that starts with a value of eight. So it means that or, and once again, leader classification is equal to 8. I can now check a preview of my selected points. So I can click display in editor. My panorama palette will be opened and I can see then what points were selected based on my query. I can easily see that uh, based on my column leader classification, I only have values 2 and 8. I can dismiss this palette using this screen check mark or also this cross and now I can save my query or if I want to use this specific query also in other survey databases I can also save to file and then open that file in some other survey database but at the moment I will just click save query and you will see that it will be saved on the survey queries so save query. I can close this dialog and I have my survey query here. So perhaps now I want to see how does it look, how many points do I have, how tense my point grid is. So I can go to my ribbon tab. As you see, when you use survey database and survey queries, you also see a specific ribbon tab. You can always go to some other tab and uh, do some editing there. But then you simply coming back to survey query. I select from this drop down my survey query. Remember that you may have several of those. So I have selected my survey query and now have different options. For example, I can click on preview in drawing. Clicking on that button, it will now show me those points on drawing area, but those are not yet included to my drawing. This preview in drawing is also quite usable when you want to check if your points are at right coordinates or if they align with your data. For example, I can quickly create a map service. So I use map with space command. I have a task pane. I connect to online database, connect to data and create some map service link. I have some already defined that can be easily selected, connect, and then I select some map layers I want to import. 
auto photo cache and add to map. It will start to grab that data and then I can zoom in and I can quite easily see actually that my data is at the right place. So if I zoom in I can also close my data connect palette and then just resample that raster behind those points. Okay, that's one way how you can check that your data is correctly aligned. I go back to survey query ribbon tab and I can easily dismiss this preview using a button in this left hand corner. So just left click. I can also bring back my editor palette if I want to see those points in editor, display in editor, again in panorama window as we saw before. But my main goal is also to create a existing ground surface from those points. So that's why I pay my attention to query results. As you can see from prospector tab, I don't have any surfaces yet, but I can use this button add to surface also to create a new surface. So I click on that button add to surface, then I can left click and pick in create new. I can give some name, I use a default template, description, style, those can be changed also later. I create a thin surface. Okay, now it's quite an important step in terms of query results. For example, when something is changing with my raw database or it will be updated, if I pick reference, then also my query results can be easily updated. But if I pick a insert, then uh, I need to create a new one. So I pick reference because I want to update those points somewhere in the future. And now I can use a survey query. So I can select my survey query. Based on that, I create a surface. I click OK and I already see my surface boundary. Of course, I may change my styling to see my surface in many different ways. But at the moment, I just pick my surface, right click and pick object viewer. So a new window opens called object viewer. Just make it a little bit smaller. And now I can easily check my data, how it looks like. And if I'm satisfied enough, I can then use this data also for other design studies. I close my object viewer and to sum up in this video I created some new parameters under point and use defined property classifications. I created those because I wanted to import my raw database and after importing my raw database I was able to create a query based on those specific property values. Based on your data provider, you may need to have some different columns or properties. But as you see, you can easily use just Civil 3D to do those filtering and you don't need to have any other specific software to do that beforehand. That way you always start from raw data and you can easily modify your settings to recreate your design.